Good morning. How how's everyone doing? Are we good? Great, great, great. Um, also, before I begin, um, welcome to all the first-time visitors. Um, it's great that uh, you're joining us this morning, and you're joining us in the midst of a series that we've been doing, a discipleship series. Uh, but before I continue, one of the things that we are launching as a family, it's great to be part of a spiritual family that really takes care, um, takes care of you and also takes care of your walk with God. Um, we strongly believe that isolation kills, and that is why we always push that we all get into community. And one of the things that we are launching is a one-to-one -one campaign. A one-to-one -one campaign is this book right here. Has anybody done one-to-one -one before? Yes. And I'm sure some of you have done it multiple times. Um, and this is a book that we have in every nation that helps us in regards to our foundations. Now, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, um, uh, chapter 7, verse uh, uh, 22 uh, 227, you guys are probably familiar with the story of the two who built their house, uh, one who built his house on sand, one who built his house on a rock. And foundations are very important. And we, it's always good that every now and then we revert back to them. Now, what people don't know about the scripture is that they both started to build on sand. Just the one guy stopped when he hit rock. The other stopped because he was just didn't want to go any further. They both started on the same surface, but the one kept on digging until he hit rock, and then he began to build. And we want to be that. We want to be those type of people where we build our foundation on Christ and nothing else. Our foundation on 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 what Jesus did and nothing else. Our foundation not on podcasts, not on great books, not on self help books, not on conferences, not on not on. Uh, um, um, not even on prophetic words. <laughs> I'm looking at Sisha so she doesn't, you know, smite me from a prophet. Um, but even she would say, <laughs> but even she would say that even all, all the prophetic words that she even gives to people, you must always make sure that they go back to Christ being the center. Christ is the only foundation. So we are launching this in every Connect group. And if you're not part of a Connect group, I, I really encourage you that you join a Connect group. And this book deals with the foundations that we sometimes take for granted. So salvation, repentance, baptism, um, lordship. See, a lot of the times when, when you get into the walk of God um, and life happens um, and you become slightly more mature than you were yesterday, uh, you tend to think that you might not need foundations. Uh, but have you noticed that whenever things get rough, um, somehow for me, whenever things get rough, I, I think back on the songs I used to sing in boarding school. Because um, they were just scripture. They were just scripture. Um, and they were African songs, funny enough. And I say funny enough because I'm, uh, I'm known to be biased towards uh, uh, English songs. But I go back to my Eastern Cape boarding school roots. And then I start singing those songs. Because those are the songs that brought me to the faith when I was young. And you know, back in the day, all the songs we sang were all scripture. <laughs> they were all scripture based. Um, and it's important that we go back to these foundations. So please join us. And then awesome thing about this is it's also an app. So it's a book that we have um, that you can purchase from us. But you can also get the one-to-one uh, -one app as well. Um, and that's free. And you can download that. So we encourage you, join us on this journey. It's going to be for a couple of weeks. We want to make sure that our foundations are correct for what's coming in the new year or in this, the rest of the year. Amen? Awesome, awesome. Um, let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and thy glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 And like I said, if you're joining us for the first time, as Every Nation Sunning Hill, we've been undergoing a three-week series on discipleship. Three-week series on discipleship. And the reason why we've been doing this is because we believe that we are called to discipleship. We believe we are called to discipleship. We have a goal this year in our area, is that we want to see Sunning Hill transformed through discipleship in the Word, discipleship in God's presence, discipleship in God's power. 
That is our goal for our five kilometer radius for Sunning Hill. Now, let me break that down and just open up some definitions. You hear this term a lot at our church, discipleship, disciple, dis discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. What is discipleship? Discipleship is following Jesus. Full stop. Making disciples is helping others to follow Jesus. That's it. So whenever you hear us speak of discipleship, that's exactly what discipleship is. And that is why we are doing the series, because we feel that we are called to that. And what are we called to? We are called to follow Jesus. We are called to fellowship with other believers. And we are called to fish for people who do not know Christ. Those are the three F's that we've been working on in these last three weeks. Follow, fellowship, and fish so today we are going to touch on fish but one of the things that i'd like to encourage you on if you're sitting here and how you can get involved so if you're sitting here this morning one of the things what i encourage you is being intentional in your growth this year um being intentional in your growth and and, and planning out exactly what do you feel god wants you to intentionalize in your spiritual walk this year if you leave your growth to randomness you'll always be mediocre you cannot freestyle this. So what do we have? As a, and I'm so grateful for the eldership and the pastoral team in our church. There are five ways that, we, that we've given you that you can intentionalize this year if you want to grow. So number one, attend church regularly. I have slides today. Did I tell you? I've been trying to tell you I'm somebody. Now I can say things like, uh, next slide. I never used to say that, but today I can say that. I digress. I digress. So, attend church regularly. So, if you're somebody there who kind of freestyles attending church, now and then, you know, maybe you wake up on time, or sometimes, you, you know, you're like, today I'm going to go to church, or today, uh, we'll see. I'd, I would encourage you to intentionalize attending church regularly. Number two, live connected. Live Connected is a course that we run here at church every Sunday at 11 o'clock. And this, tells you, this tells, us, tells you more about our church. So if you're attending church, it's important to get to know what type of church you're attending. Who we are, what we do, what we value. It's important for you to know these things. As Every Nation Sunning Hill, we don't believe in making congregants. We believe in making disciples. Amen. Get to know the church you're attending. One day, I'm going to rock up here and spray doom, and then you can't say you didn't know. Because in Live Connected, chapter 3, there's doom spraying, but you forgot to attend, and then, you know, for first-time visitors, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so Live Connected tells you more about who we are, tells you about how to plug into spiritual family, and tells you, helps you as well to facilitate your growth in terms of your gifts and talents and how you can serve here. So the other one, um, live connected, joining a connect group. A connect, connect groups are the lifeblood of our church. That's where everything happens in terms of growth, uh, your growth and building relationships with other people to facilitate, to facilitate obedience to the word. This is what connect groups are for. So we encourage you to please join a connect group. And if it's something as well that you're kind of regularly doing, this year intentionalize going to connect group consistently because you're really going to grow all right number four now if you want to really upgrade your growth one of the best ways i have never grown more than when i've had to take responsibility for somebody else's growth there are some things there, there are some things in the in in the beginning of my faith walk with jesus that i didn't have convictions about I just couldn't do them because then I would have, I'd be running a connect group and then I can't lie to the guys who I'm leading. So what will stop me from being dodge is the fact that people are following me. <laughs> and sometimes that's what you need to keep you in line. If you want to accelerate your growth, start a connect group. Start a connect group. I'm eyeing Zolega. She's not making eye contact with me. <laughs> she just started one. Give her a hand. She just started one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nervous in the beginning, but you'll, the awesome thing about starting a connect group here is that you have all the material that you need. So starting a connect group. And the lastly, number five, is the one-to-one. -one. 
doing the one-to-one -one campaign. This is what we are doing this year, focusing on our foundations. It's important to make sure that those are set in. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today, so we are three Fs that we are dealing with. Follow, fellowship, and fish. Today we are dealing with fish. So a couple of the guys here at our church have been going out evangelizing, and I've asked two of them to come share testimony about them going out and preaching the gospel. Uh, so I'm going to call upon uh, Zama first. Uh, it's Zama and Ishma, but I'm going to call upon Zama to come share a testimony on when she went out. Uh, uh, what did she encounter? Why are you taking out notes? How long is this thing, Zama? Uh -uh. <laughs> I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> so, morning church. Um, so, I attended the evangelism online series. I came to the church and I was part of the watch parties. So, after the first session on the Friday, we're informed that we're actually going to go out and evangelize on the Saturday. And I was completely petrified. Uh, my first thought was that I'm not coming back on Sunday, on Saturday, and that way then I wouldn't have to do it. But thanks to the encouragement from some of the people who are here, who were at the evangelism party, they encouraged me to come back and they told me to just show up and we would see what happens. So I did show up and I'm glad that I showed up. So after the session on Saturday, we then went out. There were, four t there were three teams of four. Um, some went, one group went to Chile Lane, one to Chile on top, and we went to Cambridge Crossing. Uh, we then partnered up, I was actually partnered up with Ishmael, and we did Jesus at the door. Uh, I don't think I've ever been so scared. I was so scared. <laughs> but uh, I stepped out in faith and I trusted God. So my biggest challenge was stepping out of my own way and letting God take the reins. Um, and remembering that these were real people with real issues and that they were responding from their own experiences and that any rejection was not a rejection of me. Um, the victory I can speak about is, was being able to see God work through us, being able to tell people about Jesus, whether they were receptive or not. Most people were receptive about hearing about Jesus, even if they weren't receptive about praying or being prayed for. Um, my challenge, what I thought God, how I thought God was challenging me in this, is that he wanted to get me out of my comfort zone. I went into this thinking it would be theoretical, but I had no intention of putting it into practice. I had already decided long ago that I would never be able to do evangelism, but he challenged me to let go and trust him and step out in faith far beyond my comfort level. He showed me what, I, what he can do when I let him lead. Now, it's something I'm ready to do again. And I had a scary realization that I might just be an evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> Ishmael? Yeah, this is recorded, Zama, so Timba's gonna hear that. And you know, <laughs> it's over now. Uh, good morning, church. Yeah, so I had the the opportunity uh, to attend the online evangelism conference last weekend as well. Um, it, it was pretty awesome. I think uh, the, the promise of the conference was that, you know, you attend this, you get better at evangelism. And that's specifically why I attended. I wanted to get better at evangelism. I wanted to get better at reaching uh, people with the gospel. And that promise was met. I feel that I am confident coming from the conference. I feel that I'm actually confident uh, sharing the gospel. I feel that I have the knowledge, I have the, the tools and the resources to be able to effectively uh, share the gospel with people. So this week, uh, actually, one of the things that actually challenged me during the conference, there were quite a number of things, uh, but one thing that really stuck out with me it was the fact that we needed to be intentional, we needed to be deliberate about uh, sharing the gospel with other people. In other words, you needed to set aside time in your day 
or in your week, you needed to set aside time somewhere and actually schedule uh, doing the work uh, of an evangelist or doing the work of evangelism. So I took that to heart, and that's what I did this week uh, or last week. Uh, I, I, I said to myself, I'm going to go on Monday. I'm going to go share the gospel with someone just for 30 minutes or, you know, one hour of my day. Monday came. It was busy. I had excuses. I didn't do it. Uh, Tuesday came. Uh, there were other excuses and, you know, other reasons to not do it, so I didn't do it. Wednesday came, uh, and I could see a pattern. <laughs> a pattern. <laughs> I, could, I could see a pattern was developing. Uh, but Thursday morning I woke up and, and God said to me, and I wrote it down, but I think I can remember it. He said to me, this thing that we do, either it's real or it's not, Right? Uh, this thing that we do, in other words, this great commission, this call to make disciples, either it's real or it's not. And I knew exactly what that meant. I knew I had a choice to make. Either I'm going to act now or I'm never going to do it. So I set aside time in my day. I said lunchtime. The day was getting busy. Lunchtime didn't happen. And then my day was almost over, but it was 3 o'clock and I had a break. Uh, I had a break in my work schedule. So I thought, I'm going to go to the mall and talk to people, and, and that's, what, that's exactly what I did. Uh, I went, I spoke to two people, and, and it was an amazing conversation. Uh, and, and this is one thing I took from it, that the conversation was actually easy, it was respectful, you know, we weren't shouting or, you know, at each other's necks, uh, and I, I, I feel that they actually enjoyed the conversation, and I enjoyed the conversation as well. And this is just a testament to some of the tools and the resources that we got from the conference. And yeah, that's my testimony. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be reaching out and doing follow-ups with these people, and uh, I will continue in relationship and just uh, talking to them about, about God and, and, and what he's doing in their lives. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ishmael. Thank you, Zama. Well done, guys. There are no perfect fishermen. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. In my academic, in my academic year when I was doing School of Campus Ministry, we did some of our intensives in Cape Town. Um, and part of, our, part of uh, the academics that we did, we also had outings and sightseeings that they will take us on to go see the city of Cape Town. Do you know how someone, do you, do you know when you know that somebody's from Cape Town? They'll let you know. <laughs> yes, I did, yes, I did, deal with it. One of the places I loved going to was a fish and chips joint on the other side of the mountain. I've never understood why Cape Townians say the other side of the mountain. Whatever but it's on the other side of the mountain. It is a weird fish and chips joint. It's right, right by the docks, um, and it's run by fishermen. I think, Cape Townians, you, you'd know, yes? There they are, they're all the pride, proud people. There they are, yes, proudly Cape Town. Anyway, so this place is amazing, and I'm not a fish, I'm not, I'm not a, 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 a fan of fish at, a, at all, but we went to this place, and it's old school, I mean, news, they put in newspapers and everything, and it's, it's amazing, it's amazing, but one of the things when I was there, I observed a couple of things about these people who run the store. Um, a, a, apart from the fact that there is, fishing is smelly, guys. Am I the only one who knows, like, like fishing is smelly, like, it's, it's a, it's a smelly profession, you know, you, like, it's, 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 there's, there's a stench that comes, if you're not, for those who are landlocked, who come from landlocked city, like Limpopo and, um, uh, Joburg and, you, 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 like, it's a, the moment you get to the beach and you smell, it's not like an Instagram, there's a whiff that hits you, <laughs> that you're like, whiff, okay, so we're in the queue here trying to get fish. And then this is one of the things, I noticed a couple of things, and I want to share these things with you. So, number one, fishing is a, it's a smelly sport. Um, fish smell. They just smell. You know, slippery. I saw these guys working them, cleaning them, and preparing them. The end product is great, but it, it's smelly. 
It's smelly. And, and you know what I realized? That the, the, the fish have nothing. They, they can't do anything about it. That, that's just how they are. They just smell. And I found out something revolutionary that day. Do you know why they smell? Because they're dead. Like you can't expect anything else. They dead. They dead. You know, sometimes when we go out into the world, we hold the world to a biblical standard that they don't know. And then we come in judgment when we're trying to fish them out. When I was in that queue, there was a, you, you, you know when somebody has a face when they smell something bad? Like I was like this. Imagine me having a conversation with someone and having a face like that. I'm disgusted by just by who they are. Fish smell because they're dead. Sinners sin. I know it's a shock, but that's all they can do is sin. That's all they can do is sin. The issue is not the fish. The issue is that you forgot that you were a fisherman. Because the only person who can't smell the fish is a... There we go. The other thing I noticed as well while I was there is that you catch what you catch. You catch... I have this thing with my kids when I give them something and they start throwing tantrums. You get what you get, you don't get upset. Mlont. You get what you get, you don't get upset. I was amazed by how much trash and dirt there was in the boats. There's just trash, guys. Like, it's, it's dirty. And what I realized is that when you catch, when these guys catch fish, they catch everything that comes with it. They catch the trash, the plastic bottles, the debris from the ground. Everything is in that net. And that's why those nets have to be mended each time they come back on shore. They have to work on the nets because it catches everything. You catch, you get what you get. You don't get upset. So, before I get carried, you know how I like going off a tangent. I want to make sure. Everything comes in that net. People come with baggage, guys. There's no such thing as a prized fish. Sometimes when you're catching fish, you catch everything that comes with it. Brokenness, dysfunction. You don't choose which fish you catch. You catch everything that comes with it. The art of a fisherman is to go beyond the trash and pick up the fish. That is the art of a good fisherman. You look past all the trash and you take out the fish. There's value in the fish. A lot of us in our walk with God, we have, our nets have been torn. When we go out and fish, we throw nets of love, we throw nets of compassion, we throw nets of forgiveness. If you do not spend time mending your nets each time you come back, you're going to catch other things. You're going to catch bitterness. You're going to catch feelings. You're going to catch resentment. And it gets to a point where, it'll get to a point where that when you don't allow God to work on those nets for you to go out again and meet people, you become bitter, you become a cynical Christian. It's difficult for a cynical Christian to spread the gospel. It's difficult. You get what you get. You don't get upset. Some of us need mending. Your love for people needs to be mended. One of the weird things I notice about these guys, the fishing community, they, they, they are strong. They, these guys are tight. These guys are, are close. Like, do you know? These guys purposely, they purposely offend each other as a term of endearment. That's how you know you're close with someone. 
Some of you, you know, you come from families like that. We don't know what your real name is, but for 20 years, you have a nickname. And that nickname has a story behind it. You know, here at, you, here at church, we call you Pookie, but we know that's not your government name. It's just stuck with you through maybe a scenario or whatever. These guys affirm each other. They offend each other as a term of endearment. Some of the nicknames I heard was, um, so there's one guy, um, his name was Kiss My Doe. Kiss My Doe. So his anatomy is built in such a way that when he's in motion, his knees touch. So he has an accent. So in Kosa, when you translate it, it's kiss my doll. But they say kiss my doll. The other, there's another guy who had, uh, 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 um, oh man, five head. That, I, I can't forget that. Five head. So this guy had a pronounced forehead and his hairline started here. So it's not a forehead, it's a five, five head. Yeah, so they called him five head. The, some of you should not be laughing, actually. <laughs> Stop it. Five head. Another guy called Colgate. He had no teeth. He had no teeth. Colgate. Colgate. It's difficult to take offense when we all smell. It's difficult to take offense when we are all brought together. The one thing that makes us stink has brought us together. We don't have the luxury to take offense because we're all in one accord about the exact same thing. The level of community and, un and honesty and it's strange, and, this, and these guys, they call themselves, these are their nicknames. This is what they call themselves. You know, sometimes as Christians, we, we forget the mandate of what God has called us to do. That it gets to a point where times where you're out of alignment, and when you are out of alignment with what God has called you to do, it's easy to have a lifestyle of offense of everything. You might be outside the will of God. You might be outside... Uh, or might not be in obedient, not all the time, but you might not be obedient to where God has called you or doing the business of what God has called you in your life to do, that you have the luxury of taking offense at different things. When you opinionated about everything, but there's nothing that you stand for, there's a realignment that has gone out. There's a realignment that has gone out. These guys don't have the luxury to take offense because... The most pressing matter is fish. That's it. The most pressing matter is fish. And let me just digress slightly, slightly on this. It's a bit of a, a, a touchy. I really encourage you... I really encourage you to, to please be plugged in. I know we say it a lot of the time, but let me tell you what, they, what happens in our generation. Um, because you have so much information that's given to you and so much of what you have to do or what you are not doing, it's easy to be out of alignment of God. It is easy for you to get in such a place, in such a place where all you don't know what... You're not obedient to God's call on your life that your Christianity becomes about dealing with issues. Be careful of that. Be careful of that. Remember, we're not looking for perfect fishermen. <laughs> but when you get to a point where you don't walk in God's will for your life and advancing God's kingdom, it's easy for your Christianity to become about you dealing with issues counseling for six years for the same thing but you attend church whenever you like you haven't had spiritual disciplines for the last five years but you wonder why victory is difficult please be careful of that there is there is this new thing of modern christianity where it's all about dealing with issues guys we'll forever have issues Anybody on this side of heaven, there's something funky with you. 
That's what we have in common. <laughs> That's what we have in common. But we are still, God knew this, but even, even in the midst of that, he commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations. So take you and your childhood issues and go make disciples. Take you and your dysfunctions, go make disciples. Take you and your brokenness, go make disciples. If you are waiting for God to move, hey, you can. he's like, I'm waiting on you. I want to show the world what, an, what a perfect God can do with an imperfect person. I hope you hear me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with counseling or anything like that. But anything that makes an idol, anything that becomes an idol, we got to be careful of that. Amen? Amen. There are two parts. The other thing I noticed is there are two parts to fishing. There are two parts to fishing. So catching the fish and preparing for consumption. So, you wake up in the morning, you get in a boat, we go out to the ocean or wherever, lake, we throw our rods, we throw our nets, we catch the fish. We put it in the boat, we come back to shore. Fishing does not end when you catch the fish. Now there's preparation for consumption. It comes back. I saw this. It comes back. And like an assembly line that is next level. It gets from one bucket to another. They clean up the trash that they picked up from the net. They throw it on the other side. The, buck, the fish goes from like three buckets of being cleaned before it gets on a table. Once it gets on a table, it is scaled. Is that the word for it? Scaled? Sc yeah, descaled. Yes, descaled. De for those who are used to pill charts. So descaled is when you... When you take the scales off, don't, don't act like you, you know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. Is when you take the scales off the fish. And then they, they, they take the insides out. And then the, what's the word? Fillet, fill, fillet it? Is that? Fill, what's Ndaba? Ndaba knows these things. <laughs> fillet it, yes. Take the head, you know, they cut the head off. They put it in one bucket for the East Africans to make food with, and then they, they, the rest, they store. You know, you know, you know. Where's Tony? You know, you know. They package it. Some of it is going to be sushi. Some of it is going to be, you know, fish and chips. Some of it is going to be something different. And then it's sent out to where it's supposed to be after it is done. The purpose of evangelism is discipleship. That is the purpose of evangelism. We are not interested in making converts. The Bible says we are meant to make disciples. When somebody gets saved, that's when the work actually begins. Because what happens is if we get into a thing where we're just making converts, all we're doing is just increasing the population of spiritual orphans. Evangelism is for the sake of discipleship. We catch and we have to, pre and discipleship is a messy job. It's smelly. Ask the connect leaders who are here. It's a messy job. It requires a lot of cleaning, a lot of patience. Before the fish is ready for consumption, there is a lot that must take place. Yeah. And that is why, as Every Nation Sunning Hill, we want to be focused this year. We only have capacity for our area. That's why we encourage you to please be aware of the people who serve you where you go buy your groceries. Because that's where you buy your groceries every day. You can build relationally with these people. Where you go to gym, you see them every day. You can build relationally with these people. Your barristers, uh, uh, people at Woolworths, you build with them every day. And that is why we want this. And if we can be intentional with that, this five kilometer radius thing, guys, will clock it by June. We'll clock it by June. The purpose of evangelism is discipleship. Matthew 28. Sure? Please don't tell Temba. It's only now that I'm sharing a scripture. I, I only have two scriptures for you. <laughs> and you'll probably see them on my, you'll see them on my slides. 
-hmm. And I'll keep echoing Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you'll hear me echoing, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. It's like Jesus knew what he would say to Peter. He knew. And a lot of times we tend to think that, ah, fishes of men, you just catch fish. There is a process in catching fish. And God was trying to tell us something in us impacting our neighborhood. Amen? The other thing I noticed is that their lives revolve around fish. <laughs> These guys, their lives revolve around fish. <laughs> and it's not that they... It, it's not that they're fishing like all the time. These guys wake up early in the morning, they go fish for a couple of hours, they come back, prep the fish, and it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a taxing job. So it can't be done the whole day. So it ends at about like maybe 11 a.m. because they were out at four, you know. Um, but they're very intentional. Their lives revolve around fish. So the guys who go socialize after, they socialize after the fishing thing is done. Uh, some of them even have two jobs. So after the fishing thing, they go and do their normal jobs or they go for a jog or they go what, whatever they have that's planned. But their lives revolve around fishing. And when I say your life evolves around fishing, don't, don't think I'm saying you must be fishing every day. What I learned from those guys is that they intend, there are certain concrete stuff that cannot move. And everything else moves around it. As believers, one of those concrete things that cannot move is us advancing God's kingdom. And sometimes it's hard for us to hear certain things like God's kingdom advances. Everything moves around that. Your marriage moves around that. Your business moves around that. Your gym moves around that. Your holiday moves around that. That's something I wasn't ready to hear in ministry school. <laughs> it's not that they're doing it every day, but when they do it, they are intentional. Their lives revolve around fishing. And do you know why that is important? They plan around it. I hear it when people say, I love this, I love that, I love that. You plan for what you love. I will know what you love. Show me your plans. I'll, I'll tell you what you love. Me and my wife normally go back and forth with this thing. And I don't know if I haven't been married to other women, so you guys have to correct me. If, uh, I know it's a weird thing to say, right? It's like a weird... Uh, let's go with it. So I'm trying to figure out if my wife is the only one who does this. Um, so I don't want to generalize. Uh, my, when my wife has an emotional intention about something, to her it's almost like she's done it. Like she's done that task. But she hasn't done it. She's felt like she's done it. But she hasn't done it. <laughs> you know the difference between motion and progress? So when you are talking about something, the same chemical that's triggered in your brain of doing it is released. That's why you get guys who talk about gym 1st of January. I'm going to, you know, gym contract, virgin active, I'm going to lose weight. And you feel good about it. You feel real good about it. And then by the time you sign up, you don't last, you don't last till Valentine's Day. <laughs> and, it, it, and this is an actual thing. This is an actual thing. So there are times where I tell my wife, like, I, I know you, you felt like you were going to do it, but you also have to kind of have to do it. I, I feel you, but you have to do the thing that you said you're going to do the thing that does the pots that do the thing. <laughs> so that's where the conversation ends. I haven't been married long enough for the conversation to go further than that without a conflict that can't be managed. The, that's the, uh, Pastor Amy's year. That's Pastor Amy and Mam Lapo. They're the only ones who, the, there's a level of conflict that can only be handled after like 15 years of marriage. Um, but it's that it, you plan for what you love I love when Ishmael said I, he, he was convicted that he said he was going to do it and then he was convicted he picked up a pattern that he was talking more than he was doing 
the Holy Spirit convicted him and he had to forcefully make a plan to block everything at lunchtime and actually go and do it. And we're going to have to do that when it comes to fishing for souls. We're going to have to do that. Do you know why fishermen can go get fish? They love fish. They love fish. To them, it's just as simple as that. You will always plan for what you love. You will always plan for what you love. And I think our challenge is that we are asking the Holy Spirit to give us a love for people. To give us the love for people. Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And there's nothing wrong with us humbling ourselves and saying, Jesus, we do not have the love for fish. We need you to come put it in us. Because we know we always digress to what we love. So we need your help. We need your help. I want to put some structure to this. So just to remind you guys. So for those who are afraid of evangelizing, it's okay. Fishing is smelly. We all have a, like this whole mountain that we need to get rid of in our heads that it's only for the professional evangelisms, evangelists who have angels in their room and there's a choir in their room before they sleep. No, guys. It's for all of us. There are those who have the office of an evangelist, which is Pastor Temba and Amy. But preaching the gospel is a Christian activity all Christians are supposed to do. It's not for a select few. The reason why we use Jesus at the door is to train that muscle. We're not asking you to have a separate thing that you do. Jesus at the door is for the purpose of training that evangelism muscle. Why? So every other social area in your life can have an intentionality of evangelism. Because we want you to evangelize at gym, at your workspace, where you have fun. And for some of you, you need to have fun. Some of you need to, I say this with such a love for you, as best as I can. You need to get a life. Because people come to where there's fun. Get out. Go meet people. If everything you do is at church, that's called in-reach. It's, it's not called outreach. If all your activities have to do with being here, God, please hear me. Please hear me. You are going to feel awkward when you go out there and you have to start to speak to people. You're going to make the same face I made when I smelled fish. Somebody's going to drop a swear word and you're going to be touched. Somebody is going to say something strange that's unbiblical and you're going to be touched. You start becoming like a touch screen whenever something... You just react. You just, please go out and meet people. How do we practicalize this time, Judy Jude? Yo, I'm pulling to Pastor Temba's stance here now. Tent preaching. So guys, remember this. Rem remember these five things. Fishing is smelly. It's okay. Number two, you catch what you catch. You catch what you catch. Fish Number three, fishermen have strong community. Isolation kills. Isolation kills. A lot of the things that I've grown in in my spiritual walk is stuff that I did not know how to do. And I, I know it's a bad term to use, but I faked it till, till I became proficient at it. So I always find something that I'm struggling with, and then I, I find other people who are struggling with the same thing, and I say, I'm going to help you. <laughs> Because now I'm forced to have to work on it now. I can't run. 
fishermen have a strong community, be in community. Fishing has to do with catching and preparing. The purpose, the purpose of evangelism is discipleship. We are here to make disciples, not converts. Number five, their lives revolve around fish. They love fish. You will always plan for what you love. My challenge to you, be a disciple. Number one, be a disciple. The five things I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon, attach yourself to one of those things. Be a disciple. Intentionalize attending church regularly. Join a connect group. If you've been coming to this church for a while and you don't know what we're about, join Live Connected. If you're at a point where you feel like you want to grow more, start a connect group. If you want to start a connect group, if you want to be in a connect group, speak to me. You want to start a connect group, speak to me. The other one, join one to one campaign that we're doing so we can make sure our foundations are correct. Amen? Amen. Stand with me. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Did these slides change while I was preaching? They did, right? Okay. As long as you saw them, right? Like, because each time I turned, I just saw fish. And I was like, oh, it's just my own insecurity. Forgive me. I wasn't meant to look back. I wasn't meant to look back. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you'd give us a love for fish. Give us a love for people. Give us a love for people. <laughs> you know what I love about God? Is that when he commands you to do anything, he provides everything you need to do that command. Even when you don't have the love for it, he comes and puts it in you. Like, imagine that. How amazing is that? And all we have to do is just be honest. Like, Lord, I, I won't lie to you, Lord, I'm not feeling this thing. This thing is scary. This, not, this, this part of Christianity I don't think is for me. It's for prophets and evangelists. And just be honest and let the Holy Spirit come do a work in your heart. You'll see the Holy Spirit start to sensitize you to people around you. To start even having conversations, saying hello, good morning. How are you doing today? You know what? I'm going to pray for you. I'll see you tomorrow. Something like that can make someone's day. Start with small steps. Memorize name tags. Guys, the power of memorizing name tags is amazing. Okay. When you meet someone at a restaurant, a coffee shop, memorize the person's name tag and call them by name. Watch what happens after that. Guys, Ishmael was right. This thing is not hard. We've just made it like such a hectic thing. All we are asking you to do is be nice to people and show love. Lord, please put a heart in us for people. Put a heart in us for the people that you've put us around. In our community, our coffee shops, the gyms we attend, the universities we attend, the jobs we go to, the social places we go to. Please, Holy Spirit, sensitize us to the people around you, around us, Lord. Help us to see what you see. Help us to see what you see. Change our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Where we've given up, where we've given up on seeing people for who they are, Lord. Please change our hearts from hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Jesus, help us to be like you. Help us to see people the way you saw them. Help us to forgive them. Help us to have compassion. Help us to know that sinners sin. And help us to love them even more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you are here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Christ, after the service, please feel free to come to the front so we can pray with you. We want to fix that relationship first before the others. And if you need prayer for anything, we have our prayer team up here. Please feel free to come through for prayer. 
For those who are visiting us for the first time, we look forward to connecting with you down the hall to the right at our visitor's room. I uh, would love to get to know how your experience was. For the rest of you, go fish. Go fish. It's smelly, yes. Go fish. There was a time you were that smelly fish. Amen. God bless.